Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ben, and in this episode of the Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast, I'm chatting with Kyle Leffers, team captain of Rub and Grub, and owner and director of Rub and Grub Business, and co-owner, director of Meet Your Needs, currently nominated for the ABA Awards. So, let's bring Kyle in. This is the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast, with your host, Ben Arnott. How long's it been since your last confession? Kyle, good morning, buddy. How are you? It's good to see you. Ben, good mate. Yourself? Mate, great. Great. It's great to be back in the chair. If it, it, I feel like it's been a little while since I've done this. You can probably tell by the uh, couple of little hiccups in the intro there, but it's good to be back and it's great <laughs> to see you again. I haven't seen you since, uh, I think, um, Meet Meet back in Horsham, which would have been 2019. I reckon it was, yeah, yes. Yeah. Jeez, that feels like a long time ago now, doesn't it? <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah, back in the days when we could travel freely. That's it. That's a good old, uh, good old cold Horsham. <laughs> yeah, 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 mate. I was dying that 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 weekend. I was so cold. All the all the Victorians are walking around in shorts and t-shirts, and I was rugged up with everything I owned on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I was I was persevering. I've got that sort of like mentality. I'll try and stay in shorts as long as I can. I think I piped at about one a.m. I'm out. Sorry, guys. See, I I was already back in the hotel and under the doona with the heater going flat out all night by 1 a.m. So (laughs) I just couldn't cut it. But anyway, mate, listen, I want to kick off by saying a a huge congratulations to you. Not only have you been nominated for an an ABA award for an Australasian Barbecue Alliance Award, but you have a baby coming. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Wife's, she's uh, 27 weeks now. Um, so what another 11, 12 weeks away and it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be a game changer going forward. At Mate, first, that's exciting. So it's, uh, it's, it's overwhelming now. I can't imagine what it's going to be like in a few months. Yeah, for <laughs> sure, man, for but sure. Yeah. Now you did say that that was your, your first, didn't you? Correct. Correct. Yes. So have you got the, uh, the, the nursery all set up now with the, with a change oh. table mounted on, on two Weber kettles with like a board across the top <laughs> for a changing table and. I'd love to do that. I don't think it would pass the wife pass on that one. But uh, <laughs> now I've got a couple, couple, couple busy weekends ahead. I've got some painting to do, but we've pretty much got everything. That, or we think we've got everything at least. So, <laughs> oh, fair enough. That's uh, some 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 good news there. And do you know yet if you're having a little boy or a little girl? It's a little boy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, We're both pretty we excited go. about that. So, yeah, very nice. So, mate, that's uh, that's going to change your life incredibly, but it's all it's all a big change for the better. So, I I know it's really nerve wracking when it's your first one. Um, <laughs> Ten years in for me, and it's still really nerve wracking. So, uh, but <laughs> but it does uh, it, it 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 is awesome. It is a huge life change, but it is awesome. But let's get back to uh, to competition barbecue. Um, tell sure. us about uh, so, sorry. So you're a a barbecue competitor. You've got a barbecue, yep. rub, and accessories business, and a butcher. So tell me, which one came first? Um, I, 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 gee, it was pretty close. I think it was um, probably the barbecue rubs came before the before the uh, the team. Um, so that would have been back in uh, early late 2014, probably early 2015. Um, I sort of. I sort of found barbecue through Instagram. My cousin was pestering me to get on Instagram, so I was always plastering my Facebook feed with pictures of food I was cooking. And he's like, jump on Instagram. And I just found this sort of like niche sort of, you know, being in Adelaide, there's not, there wasn't many people doing it um, to competition level or just low and slow in general. Um, so I sort of found, found that world and, yeah, caught up with a few people locally and just – you know, that first taste of the smoked meat, you just, you just like, well, where has this been all my life? Um, so yeah. And then, uh, and then, uh, caught up with, um, uh, Craig from sucking up with smokers and my cousin, uh, Dylan Wood. So we, yeah, we had a bit of a, bit of a chat and Craig was releasing some rubs and I was like, Oh yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm a bit of a foodie. So I was like, Oh, you know, Dylan and I started dabbling with making our own and sort of, yeah, led to, led to where my wife and I now with rub and grub and, um, Dylan's off doing his own thing with a little burger restaurant he's got going and uh, yeah sort of competition barbecue fell into that I think Adriano touched on it briefly in his episode um, uh, a few weeks back and uh, sort of through work 
through our, I work with Adriano um, and a couple of other guys. Yeah. So through work, we got into, we found this mutual like love for barbecue, a few of us. And we were talking about how we're building smokers and, and uh, yeah. So like, oh yeah, up and smoke barbecue, barbecue comp back in 2016, I think it was the first SA comp. Um, we're like, oh yeah, let's, let's, let's enter for some, some giggles. And yeah, I think we, um, I think we got, we get third place brisket and we're like, this is pretty cool. So yeah, just sort of snowballed from there and butcher shop followed. Yeah. <laughs> right. That That's really interesting that you started out with, with, with rubs before you got into competition barbecue. Usually it's the other way around. Guys get into, and, and, and ladies, people get into competition barbecue, start to have a lot of success and then decide to get into rub. So were you a, a, a chef or anything beforehand? How, how did you like, what, no, what was your... I, I, when, I, when I, when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do in life, I was always like, man, I should either be a chef. And I looked at the hours and I was like, that's not for me. <laughs> so I've always had that sort of like, you know, ambition to cook good, great food. Um, but nah, not, not, don't have a chef background. Just, just love food. And I, I can probably, probably see from, <laughs> from me that I love food, but, uh, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's good fun. No doubt about that at all, man. So what was the process like going through that, that rub development phase without, a background oh, as a chef or in competition barbecue. I mean, you, you were really starting at ground level then. Yeah, it was, there wasn't much happening in Australia at that point. Um, there's only really a few of us pushing, pushing barbecue rubs or even, you know, a couple of guys starting to get into sauces back then. It was more sort of just like buy some ingredients from my local wholesalers and mix a bunch of stuff together and, you know, it's, doing little test cooks. Um, we used to always start out cooking stuff with on chicken wings, grilling easy, you know, get a little bit of heat in there. It's got a little bit of fat that carries the flavors across. And um, so then handing, handing them out to our mates, we literally started from like those little snack size salad container sort of packaging to hand out to our mates to get some feedback. Um, and then went to stand up pouches, uh, which we, we're glad we don't do anymore because they were a, bit of a hassle to, you know, get, get all nice and get ready to, for retail. Um, and then, yeah, going from there, it just grew, you know, as we, as the, the more we sold, we just kept pumping the money back straight into the business. Like wife and I got full-time jobs as well as rub and grub and then butcher shop on the side. Um, so it was always just like focusing on, if it was our bread and butter, it'd probably be a little different. Um, but we had that time to sort of just keep funneling it up, you know, our profits and our time when we had it back into the business to help it grow. Um, so it's, it's been a slow process, like, yeah, but it's, uh, it's good fun. And yeah, where we are today, we're, we're pretty chuffed. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about the business side of things um, in the, in the second segment. So at, at what point in that, uh, in that run, you, you mentioned the 2016 up in smoke barbecue festival. Tell us about that, uh, about that experience as a first time competitor. Oh, geez. The first thing that comes to mind is how wet it was. It was crazy. It was like torrential rains. You know, I think it was by midnight, there was maybe a meter by meter of square patch. There's the only dry patch under your gazebo. It was, it was hectic, but heaps of fun, heaps and heaps, heaps of fun. So it was meeting you, like obviously met a whole bunch of people. Um, it was the sort of first place where you, you, you come across all these like-minded people that share that love for cooking low and slow barbecue. You have that same passion as you. Um, and it was, yeah, uh, I stayed up we, uh, all, all night as you do, you know, you've got your trailer packed with everything plus eight kitchen sinks for your first comp. It was, you realize <laughs> what, why the hell do I need all this stuff? Um, and yeah, exhausted, you know, a couple of days off after of work afterwards to recover and uh you, you learn pretty quick to uh to not get too too drunk uh, <laughs> at barbecue comps so well, that's for sure um just because yeah yeah you lose track and yeah it's all about scheduling right so you want to you want to keep on track of that stuff but. yeah some of us have to learn that lesson more than once i'm afraid yeah um, <laughs> that's it <laughs> speaking from experience i've had uh i've had two <laughs> comps where i've barely been able to prepare the food the next day um <laughs> it's, it was pretty rough so did you um like were you born into barbecue like was your family into into barbecue yeah, yeah so uh if we, we were and we were in a way so my, my father i think my first recollection of a barbecue him cooking barbecue would have been like 
Uh, I've got a younger brother, but it was before he was born. I was probably about eight or nine years old, and we were on a uh, uh, going on a, a family Easter trip. So it was my mum, my dad, and I in my grandfather's old like bright orange Volkswagen combi camper. We're going oh. down to um, <laughs> yeah. I wish we still had it. We were going down <laughs> to yeah, Mount Gambier, and oh, my dog. I had a, had a little bull terrier cross, which is my dog. Um, and I remember him, he had a gas go anywhere barbecue, my dad, and he's cooking sort of out the front of the, the combi, not tires on the front of it. So it's, yeah. And he, um, I, don't know, I think he must've been cooking some lamb chops or something, but he lifted the lid and the, the barbecue's on the ground and these flames are like flaring up about three meters high in the air. Cause obviously I hadn't cleaned it. The hot was, you know, halfway through like a two week trip. And it was, that was sort of like my first, like, whoa, you know, as a young kid, fire, barbecue, food, like, I can't get any camping. I can't get any better than this. So from there, it sort of, yeah, just progressed and yeah, cooking sort of your standard Aussie stuff, like your sausages and your snags and your, your, your rissoles and your patties and, and whatnot. But then, yeah, getting into more, more, more roasts and yeah, we're, it's where we are today. Yeah. Now you, you mentioned before the, the orange combi camper and that you wish you still had it. Have you seen the prices that those things are bringing oh. in at the moment? Crazy, it is outrageous. Crazy. It 50, is, it 60, is. 70, 80,000 dollars. Yeah, I think, I think my, my, uh, who did it go to? It went to like a family friend of mine and my auntie's, ended up writing it off. Like, oh. yeah, so yeah, we're, we're a bit dead, but that's quite a while ago now. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, <laughs> I, I thought that, that you're going to tell me that your father set fire to the tire that was mounted on the front of the combi there. <laughs> I was surprised he didn't. <laughs> yeah. Now it's actually funny that, that you mentioned that a couple of years ago, cause I made a, um, I made a family calendar for my parents and I went through all the old photo albums. I digitized a bunch of photos and there's a photo of, uh, of us on a family holiday as well. When that, uh, I, I'm the oldest. So I, I was a baby still and I, my mum's holding me and, uh, we're sitting with my father's parents cause they were caravanners as well. Caravanning was always our family holiday. And there's a photo of my dad wearing like 1970s short, short footy shorts and a, and a t-shirt and he's lifted the lid off this Weber and whatever he's cooking, there's about two feet of flame just coming up <laughs> off the top of the kettle there. So I think, I think that that must've been like a, like a staple for family holidays in the seventies and eighties. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, you, you mentioned before that uh, you and your cousin Dylan build smokers. Tell us a bit about that. What sort of things are you into? Oh, nah. So, no, nah, we didn't really build smokers. It was sort of when we were getting into, or well, I was getting into um, uh, doing barbecue, just seeing it through Instagram and, like, you know, looking, uh, watching YouTube videos and stuff. And I had an old, uh, it was a gas smoker, but it was an old, um, or built an old smoker from a, it was like an old clothes dryer, probably like a, a, a mid seventies clothes dryer, which is it looked like a steel locker with an old heating element in the bottom of it, and you could you'd hang your clothes in it. And I was wow for years and years and years. My dad's like one day he him talking saying I'm going to turn this into a smoker. Never happened. So I I went around there, grabbed the smoker, dropped it off at a B blasters, and yeah, got it all painted it all up, welded up some you know wire mesh, expanded racks, chucked them in there, and um, oh, geez, what was it? A little, little, little butane stove out of a caravan. Put that in there, you know, a little pan with some wood chips. So, pre charcoal, obviously, the cooks. But yeah, did did its job. Did its job. Um, I've still got it. I don't. It's more of a storage cupboard for accessories now. But it's it's still there. And I, I guarantee it's still fire up. So, that's fantastic. What was the best thing that you cooked in it? Oh, I, I keep like. Cooked a whole bunch of stuff. Didn't ever go. I don't think I ever cooked like a full size brisket or anything in there. But I remember doing this like it was almost like a bacon fatty, a fatty but wrapped in bacon. But it was like stuffed with um like the the mix was like chopped like pepperoni, so it was sort of like a pepperoni pizza cheese stuffed fatty that I smoked up and it was bloody delicious. I'll bet it was, yeah. man. I love. Uh, it's gonna sound funny, but I do love smoking a fatty. So. Uh... <laughs> So good. Um, okay, now we've uh, we've talked about the first uh, competition experience, and a lot of us have um, you know funny stories to share. Have you got a a particularly funny uh, barbecue competition story you could share with us? Oh, geez. Um, oh, 
so uh, there's there's so many things that happen on barbecue comps. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, what was it? I think one of the oh, it was that meat meet actually. I reckon it was 2019. We're handing stuff up and you know we're all like sweet. We're pretty chuffed. I think we we just ended up in a, a pork a pork category up. Might have been the first open pork category, I believe. And I was like, all right, let's, you know, we're, we're, for whatever, what I can't remember what, what have we had, but we're doing like, all right, we're going to do some pork belly burn ends. We're all sitting back going, all right, you know, one or two more categories to hand up afterwards. And I look down, I'm like, there's a bowl of pork belly burn ends over there. And I'm looking at the guys and they're like, yeah, we're supposed to hand those up. And I was like, oh, sh-. so, <laughs> but we, we didn't do too bad. We didn't place, but it was one of those things. I, I always just forgetting stuff like that, it's, you know. One of the, yeah, that was one of those comps where he's mingling too much and kept trying to catch up. But yeah, no, no standout sort of crazy funny things. It's just I think for me, barbecue comps are just about that sort of. Uh, it's building those memories of and uh, for us being in Adelaide, you're so secluded. You've got to travel a fair bit. We've got like max maybe three comps a year if we're lucky. So it's those. It's sort of that road trip tour comp that it's that's the highlight. So it's more about the snacks on the on the highway than it is about the actual food. Oh, that's yeah, that's it. You know, we might have gone to Melbourne, you know, a dozen times, but every time we go, we try and go a tiny little bit different or stay somewhere else different on the way. And you're like, I haven't had a beer at this pub yet. Let's stop in there. So sounds awesome, man. And I, I guess the uh, the big question then is, did the pork belly burnt ends end up going in? They did not. No, well, they went oh, in something, no. but it, well, they went in people's mouths. But they didn't go in the. Uh, <laughs> they didn't make it into the hand in. That's for sure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, it was some time after that we found them. <laughs> yeah, right, right. All right, we'll be back just after a short break. Hey, family, I just want to let you know that we do have our merch up available on our shop and winter is coming now. We're heading out of summer with the weather's starting to get cooler, although you wouldn't know it here on the Gold Coast today. So head on over to smokinghotconfessions.com slash shop. We've got our hoodies, we've got our beanies, we've got T-shirts over there as well. We've also got our famous Smoking Hot Confessions tumblers to keep you uh, hydrated and your cold drinks cold and your hot drinks hot. Head on over there, check that out, and grab yourself some cool-looking gear. Got a project you'd like to work on with the SHC team? Shoot Ben an email on ben at smokinghotconfessions.com and let's have a conversation. Alrighty, so now let's talk business, Kyle. You've uh, you, you got two things on the go. You've got rub and grub and meet your needs. So let's let's kick things off with, with rub and grub. You briefly mentioned that, uh, that you started uh, the business before you got into competition barbecue. So I, I guess my, my, my question then is, if you were feeling entrepreneurial, what really led you towards a barbecue business over, say, you know, opening a takeaway shop or something like that? I think it was that sort of that passion. It, it, it was a hobby, you know, cooking food, you know, you, you, beers, beers and barbecue. I'm, I'm a bit of a craft brewer as well. So really? it's, they sort of go hand in hand. So anything that sort of retracts me from my, you know, daily job, and uh, where I can just sit back and relax is a bonus. So it's sort of like become a hobby of, you know, cooking barbecue and yeah, that led into, led into uh, making grubs and yeah, doing, doing and whatnot. But um, I think it's always felt like a hobby. It still doesn't feel like it's a full-time job, even though it takes up a fair amount of my time now. Um, it, it still doesn't feel like a full-time job. And I still like, I feel like I've got time to manage everything when I probably don't. <laughs> um, so yeah. It's pretty. <laughs> yeah, right. Interesting. And uh, which which product was first? Um, I think we had uh, we had three uh, seasonings in the range. It would have been Glammy Lamb, so it's a traditional sort of you know, Aussie lamb, Aussie lamb um, seasoning, rosemary, mint, bit a bit of a uh, bit of lemon and pepper in there to give it a bit of a bit of a citrusy hit. Um, uh, sticky sesame, so it's a sort of a uh, Asian y spiced uh, uh, seasoning with a bunch of sesame seeds in it. Um, they kept it, yeah, made for chicken wings. It's really made for chicken wings and anything you're going to sort of grill at a moderate to high heat. Um, and then I think there was pork power, uh, which is, it's it's definitely not your traditional. We, we, we're not like a 100% focused on just low and slow barbecue. They're sort of, seasonings that you can use like four lines low but as well as you know just chucking in a stir fry um 
So, yeah, Pork Powers, it's a big sort of human hit, sort of got that a little South uh, sort of American mixed Asian-y sort of spices. It's it's quite different, that one, with a bit of a, a chili hit too. So they're the three staples. And then, yeah, soon after that, um, probably a couple, or a couple of years after that, I'd say, um, Deja Mu, which is a brisket um, or beef rub, you know, packed with ancho chili, just like coffee, espresso coffee, salt, pepper, and a whole bunch of other sort of earthy spices to help bring out the... Uh, the beefiness, um, yeah, and then just led into led into the other few that we've got today. So that's really interesting that you hit the ground running with three different rubs. A lot of people usually start with one and sort of see how it feels, and and then uh, sort sort of take it from there. What what work went into setting that up and and getting it off the ground and and promoting it to 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 keep it running and to grow it? Yeah, it's uh, obviously. Well, wearing a lot of hats at that point because you feel like you can do everything yourself. And but I, I suppose I, I'm a kind of person where I like to, I, I'm a bit technically minded, so I like to know how things work and processes, so I can understand better understand them myself to, you know, help 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 move things along. So it was a lot of investigating, a lot of research, um, finding local uh, suppliers that can you know uh, provide us with the with the ingredients we wanted or the containers and labelling. So like we were doing everything ourselves, like blending everything ourselves, labeling us, like bottling ourselves, labeling ourselves, and it's uh, yeah. So it's really just trying to trying to source everything to uh, get and get it all working, get it all together. Yeah. Now you mentioned before that um, that there's not a whole lot of barbecue competitions happening in in South Australia. Did you run into some of those like Adelaide's not not regional, but like some of those uh, supply chain issues? in in south australia as well in the setup like was it difficult getting the ingredients and getting the right sticky labels and the bottles and all that sort of stuff not not so much the ingredients um because we've got a couple of really good um wholesalers and suppliers of spices here in adelaide uh the the jars the were the big one so when we transitioned from the stand-up pouches sourcing a place that had the jars was was quite interesting um which we're lucky we there's a there's a local company that i think they've got a couple of a couple of places in the state as well um um but the lids in particular and we uh so the, the sprinkle cap lids um so we had a hard time trying to consistently have enough of those so we you know we'd order uh when we're starting off you know uh we'd order i don't know say 600 of the lids and then we'd go through them way too way way quick way quicker than we thought we would but then trying to get them back in and it is pre that it was difficult now it's uh, it's not as bad because we've you know obviously managing uh managing our inventory and we uh, we can forecast what we want but yeah i suppose lids and jars are probably the hardest thing to get in over the uh, over the spices yeah with the uh supply chain issues at the moment particularly oh, the, yeah uh, i've i've heard that the that the bottles are difficult to get from a lot of people. So yeah, kudos to you for being able to sort of, to, to battle through that. And um, so what sort of, uh, what sort of things came naturally to you? What, what natural talents sort of helped things fall into place for you? What was something that you just sort of picked up really quickly and, and ran with? Um, from the business side, I think it's, I've always, my day job, I'm a user experience designer, I think. Um, yeah, so work with Adriano. I think he mentioned we work um, we're for a company that um, creates uh, or builds driver training simulators for like trucks and trams and buses, and it's you know customers all over the world. So we te- technically minded with that sort of approach. I think the best thing was it was a seamless sort of uh, thing to set up an online shop. So so having that sort of like IT, you know background computer knowledge background definitely helped with that um which which put us sort of in front of a lot more customers quickly a lot quickly um especially like you know early in the game back in 2017 i think we started out with like a big cartel website or something um so now we've since moved to like a shopify back end which is so much better um but yeah having having that knowledge and how to Push, get it, get get our products and branding in front of more customers was was good. Yeah, that would have saved you quite a chunk of initial setup cost too, because getting a oh, website yeah, built definitely. for you isn't cheap. 
Definitely Sorry, l- let me rephrase. Getting a good website built for you isn't cheap. <laughs> yeah, oh, and I do, I do all the um, all the design and everything. So all of our jars and labels, all of our like, all of our uh, social media for both Rub and Grub and uh, and uh, Meet Your Needs. You know, I, I sit back and do all those. So it's yeah, having that sort of design and background is pretty good too. Now, do you mean the the design of the website, as in deciding what goes where, or are you talking about the actual graphic design of the labels and the logos and stuff? Both, yeah. So yeah. Wow. So obviously, the website's built on a on a like a platform, so it's not like full just programming coding it up yourself. Um, uh, but yeah, designing of like all the labels and all the graphical content that's created. That's uh, yeah, I do all that myself as well. Mate, that's amazing. And so you you sleep <laughs> yeah. what about two hours a night then? Yeah, yeah, I sort of function off about six hours, which I'm pretty happy with. Like, it's it's it does the job. <laughs> yeah, that's about where I'm at. Six hours is about all I seem to get either. So, uh, I uh, I understand where you're at. Now, one product that that I love that that you do have is the GA riser. Tell us about the GA riser. Uh, yeah, risers. Geez, they uh, that's uh, goes back they to my uh, my. Sorry, I I I I was just saying that they took off. Oh yeah, they did. They did probably around 2018, I reckon it was. Um, we, some, look, there was a local person in Adelaide that used to make them around 15, 20 years ago. Um, so my, my father had one. It was a little smaller, like it was only about 60, 70 mil high. Um, and when I started getting into, you know, barbecuing and um, whatnot, I, I, I sourced the a gas go anywhere and a charcoal go anywhere. And so my next step was like, okay, he's, my dad's always cooked with this, you know, extender or a rise, riser thing. I was, I was like, I'm going to try and find one. Couldn't find one anywhere. So an, another mate of mine that worked with who does like fabrication stuff on the simulators, he's got a bit of his own workshop um, doing like the steel fabrication. So I was like, oh, can you knock me up a couple of these risers? So I was like, oh, I'll do one that's about 100 mil. And I was like, oh, let's go crazy. Let's do one that's about 400 mil high. So I was like, you know, which is just stupid now. Um, but so I had these two and I started cooking with them and, you know, putting them on the socials like Insta and Facebook and people are like, oh, they, that, what's that? Where'd you get that from? Like, and it started out as literally just a ring, like no brackets, nothing. It was just so you could sort of elevate and get that extra space so I could do like a ribeye roast or something. Had nothing to do with chucking rotisseries on it. So, yeah, we, 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 um, I think we started taking pre-orders. It wasn't even on our website at that point. It was just through the like South Aussie Barbecue Facebook page, and yeah, started taking like pre-orders through those for those. And geez, I think it's uh, we must be must have either hit a thousand sales on just rises now or more. We, I still can't believe people are buying them. It's like seriously, does everyone not have one yet? Because that's what it feels like. So, yeah. And then the boom of the GA, like that's just sort of, oh, 2018, 19. Yeah, the, the Weber Go Anywhere. Um, favorite little barbecue. It's, you know, everyone's sort of, everyone who's got a kettle, like knows about a GA or has one or many or is you know, got a full set of color ones. It's just a whole nother, a whole nother little community. I love it. So Yeah, I, I was going to come to that car community actually because it feels like um it feels like like you and your riser kind of kicked off that that weber ga trend here in australia i i feel like um because because i had never I, I had honestly never heard of the weber go anywhere until i started seeing your your pictures pop up and then it was just like they were everywhere the the weber yeah, gas yeah. Were, were everywhere and there's massive facebook groups now all dedicated to to the weber go anywhere and i i feel like that sort of stems from um, your your Weber GA riser. How do you feel about that? Oh, I'd, I'd I'd like to say I definitely had a part in it. I don't want to gloat and go, yeah, it's all me. Like, I think it was just that sort of love of, you know, for me, it's like it goes back to that flames in front of the combi. You know, that's like if I can hold on to that feeling and but see it through other people cooking on a GA with a riser, like it's just like, well, this is this is awesome. So um, yeah, I think there was a couple of us that really sort of pushed it in SA and like um, uh, uh, Dane Cowan and I were like, you know, let, we should, we should sort of start a page on this, so a group on this. So we started Weber J Life group and then, you know, geez, I think we've, 
we're looking at it the other day and we, we it must be close to 10 or 11,000 members on there now and it's sort of just organically growing and it's pretty cool. So it's people all over the world doing it and you see more accessories, you've seen other people making things for them like internationally and like here is just, yeah, it's, it's a cool little community. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how many different versions of the uh, riser have you got now? Um, we've got two currently. So we've got a hundred mil riser, meaning hundred mil tire and a 200 mil, um, hundred mil sort of like, it's, it's more of your, uh, your traditional, like if you can go full simple and just use it to literally elevate your lid. So it's, it's a little higher so you can put bigger roasts and stuff in there. Um, or you can attach a rotisserie to it. Uh, but it's more your traditional open pit rotisserie. So you can't put your lid on or anything like that. Um, but you can sit back and have your beers watching your fire, watching your, you know, your, your pork crackle up in real time, which is good. Um, or a turn and riser, so it's a little larger. Um, it's more for like your, your medium to sort of low heat cooking um, uh, with rotisserie slots. So you can sink your rotisserie in. So it's like a little convection. You can cook a rotisserie with a lid on so it heats up a little quicker. Um, and yeah, and then we've got a bunch of, yeah, a little bunch of other accessories that sort of, you attack onto those as well. Very cool. Now, I saw a picture uh, recently somewhere. I'm pretty sure it, it, it was one of your pictures. It, it looked like a Perilla attachment for a Weber uh, going anywhere. Yeah. Was that you? Yeah, I've. that's ours. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm always sort of like try and be on trend or above a trend or just I think outside the box and go, okay, what's coming next? And cutting on that, you know, yes, there's low and slow, but it's sort of like, Grilling and you obviously Adriana being a great mate and a business partner introduced me to Picanha and so my whole, my whole, so I had to pivot that way a little bit. Um, so I saw, I saw like a potential for you, you more like uh, South American style cooking. Um, so I was like, you know what? I doubt anybody's done this. So I scoured the internet. It's like, nah, can't see any sort of attachment for a GA like this. Let's let's do it. Let's be the first. So yeah, we. Between my, uh, myself and my mate Ash, who fabricates all our gear, um, we yeah we designed this little Santa Maria, complete 304 stainless. Um, and, yeah, it's a, it's a nifty little kit. I, I, we sat on it for a little bit going, no one's going to pay, like, the cost for this because it's, you know, it's more than the GA, but, uh, yeah, we sold a bunch. So And it's bloody awesome. Uh, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a good little bit of kit. They do look like a very fun bit of gear, yeah. Yeah, so, are yeah. you able to give us any uh, any kind of scoops on any upcoming variations or new products or uh, what's in the pipeline over at Rub and Grub? Um, yeah, there's there's nothing set in stone. That's, my problem is I always think about these things, but it, I just I, I don't I don't focus on one. <laughs> so there's there's a few little bits and pieces coming. We're probably gonna um, uh, with our risers, we're probably gonna enhance them a little bit. I'd say so um just uh yeah modernize them a little bit um there's uh no there's probably a few more seasonings coming out soon um or in the works um but not so much like crazy like out there accessories yet but yeah well always thinking about it always thinking about it um actually not it's sort of barbecue-ish but i um I, I, just behind me i haven't opened it yet but i got a i got a a, a gosney rock box pizza oven the other day so who knows? Um, there may be accessories coming out for them just yet. <laughs> oh, okay, interesting. I thought so, that you were going to tell me that you're going to try and uh, draw inspiration from that to turn the GA into a pizza oven, and I oh, was I, I was just trying to picture uh, that in my mind. <laughs> yeah, no, we have played around. We have played around with that, um, and it's it's interesting. You can you can cook a really good pizza on a GA. It's just okay. about yeah. It's just about getting all that sort of getting the the lid insulated right and getting it so you can get that heat. Interesting. Very exciting. All right. So let's move on now then to uh, to meet your needs. And as I said at the top of the show, you've been nominated for an Australasian Barbecue Alliance Award uh, for Meet Your Needs. So, man, first of all, congratulations. And tell us what it means Cheers. to you to be nominated for that award. Oh, it's crazy. Like, I, I, to be honest, I didn't realize we'd been nominated until like a couple of days later. Someone, I think Kane, so he's, he's the, he's the uh, other co-owner of, the, of Meet Your Needs. He's like, how come you haven't posted this yet? And I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, we'll nominate. I was like, oh, wow, that, wow, that's awesome. It's a uh, for us. I think Kane's had a big back. Like, you know, he's a butcher, so he's been in the game for a long time. Adrian and myself aren't butchers, but we we bring that sort of barbecue expertise and and whatnot to the business. Um, but 
meet your needs is, uh, I think we're, is it two years in like a couple of weeks we've had the business. Um, so for us to get nominated as like, you know, one of the best butchers in the country for Lions it's pretty good. It's a really good feeling. It is so, a big achievement after such a short yeah, period yeah. of time. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go back then to, uh, to 2020 because I was, uh, from my research online, it looked like you kicked that off in about January, 2020. Um, yes, yeah. which was, which was right before everything went crazy. So tell us or not, yeah. tell us about that, uh, that startup story. Yeah. So, um, just a bit of a background, um, uh, rub and grub barbecue team, um, Kane's Kane manager, other owner of the bookshop, his previous, um, w- uh, workplace was our sponsor and me sponsor. So for a few years, um, so we, we become uh, really good friends with Kane through that, uh, you know, and, uh, going from there, we're like, well, we, 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 you know, you, you get, you have a barbecue, you have a few drinks, so, you know, one day it'd be pretty cool, you know, but the three of us, imagine us owning business, we could, we could, you know, we could do some cool stuff. Um, and that opportunity happened. Like it's, uh, the business Kane was working for, um, closed up shop. Um, there was a, there was a, there was a, there was a, there was a couple of shops up for sale in Adelaide. Um, and one of them being where we, the one we purchased where we are. So I reckon that process started, it was probably around late November, early December, 2019. Um, we literally come up, we're like, we're going to do this over some beers sitting on the esplanade of the pub. Um, we're like, oh, okay, you know, who can bring what to the business? And then, yeah, it sort of just happened from there, getting, got everything in place and bought the shop and. Got all the branding. Come up, caught up, come up with the name. Like come up with the name. Got all the branding sorted, and yeah, opened up shop. And then a week later, yeah, <laughs> it was it was a bit daunting. We were just like, oh crap, uh, this isn't going to be good. But it was. It it actually turned out really good. Um, obviously, the supermarkets ran out of meat pretty quick. So the next, you know, most people that would shop at a supermarket wouldn't really go to a butcher for a lot of meat, but they had to. Um, so for cash flow, like just your standard chicken and chicken breast fillets and, and mince, we sold a lot of that and that helped us get to where we are a lot quicker. Um, so enabled us to buy more, more plant, more machinery. Um, so obviously make our processes a lot smoother and quicker. So yes, yeah, it's, it's good, daunt, it's scary, daunting, it turned out for the better. <laughs> That's really interesting because it's, um, I, I talked to a lot of people in the barbecue industry and this this period of time has been really tough for a lot of people. So it's, it's curious to hear that that actually sort of helped you start this new business. Have you had any, um, any sort of supply chain issues? You know, we, we've seen meat shortages in all sorts of different shops and, you know, massive price, price fluctuations with the, from the suppliers oh, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. What sort of challenges have you faced in the last two years? Yeah. The price fluctuations, you know, you got your lamb and your pork keeps, you know, keeps changing around and, um, we, we, supply hasn't been too bad. We have had some parts where like, you know, we just couldn't get pork ribs. Um, and that, that was a bit of a pain because every second customer that comes in wants to buy three racks of baby bags and you're just like, sorry, don't have them. <laughs> it's a, uh, you sound like a broken record after, after a little while. Um, um, supply hasn't been too bad, uh, but cause, cause with, 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 with all the um, restaurants closing down, or but you know having to shut their doors, there's this meat sitting there. So we it actually worked out better for us because I think we're, we're sort of like a destination butcher. I brand us as like people come to us because we've got those bigger cuts. We've got a decent range of sauces and spices. We 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 you know we more than will likely have a wagyu in some form in the shop. Um, so so with closing you know, restaurants and hospitality, hospitality and street, that meat was just floating around and it had to go somewhere. So we we're picking at all these little bits. So we sort of weren't just, it's not, we're not, you just see every day. So yeah, we're, we're pulling in these little bits and pieces. So yes, supply of some stuff wasn't not good, but then supply of other stuff was awesome because you just wouldn't normally get those things in. Yeah, it was curious that you said that you were having trouble getting things like pork ribs. If the, uh, if the restaurants are closing and, international shipping and exporting was uh, cut right back. Why was there a shortage of, of pork ribs? Oh, no, no idea. I think it, I think it was more around the higher seasons of stuff. Um, like 
you know, around holidays. So it's probably just more more people buying that bulk or or actually I think I think the recent the recent um reason we couldn't get it is it was mainly because of staff shortages because of so people can't there's not as many not as many truck drivers not as many people um transporting them not as many people slaughtering so that 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 definitely played a big part okay and is that still playing out for you now not so much no no it's it's not so much now no. oh, okay yeah because i know that that's been the reason that a lot of supermarkets have said that they've been running out of stock is is because of all the drivers and things it's not that there's no product is that there's no one to get the product from A to B. Um, you know, I've got uh, where uh, Bruce Robb over in WA, for example, he's right into the barbecue scene. I'm pretty sure he's a train driver as well. He, sh- he shows photos of trains and, and all that sort of stuff. And I've seen photos from him with um, trains just sitting in the train yard because there's no one there to drive them from, from here yeah, to there. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, that I, I know that that can be, uh, can be pretty rough. Now, so you've you've come through this, you sort of, not to use an old cliche, but you were sort of you know baptism of fire type situation. You've you, you've opened your doors a week later. It's a it's a global pandemic, um, and now two years later you've been nominated for a pretty prestigious national award. I mean th- this is an industry award. It's it's popular vote and then peer reviewed. So, you know, I mean, you've, you've gone through two levels of uh, scrutiny to be nominated for this award, which is really impressive. What do you think it is that, that, that has made Meet Your Needs so successful? I think it's a, it's a combination of things. I think it's sort of like, um, for us, it's social marketing is a big one. Um, and the, having, having those cuts in there, but it, for us, it's always like, we always say between the three owners, it's it's about the customer's experience when they walk into the shop. It's not just like a, you know, hi, how you going? It'll be twenty dollars. See you later. It's sort of like you know, hey, how are you? You know, you know, what are you cooking this weekend? You know, you're trying to trying to push our knowledge onto a customer. So if they go, oh, how do I cook a brisket? It's you know, we know how to tell them to cook a brisket. Um, you know, we know the we we know all the locally made. Um, Australian rubs that are in sources that are best going to, you know, go with it. So it's having that expertise and that knowledge um, that people feel comfortable asking us the question when they come in the shop. I think that's, that's what is a big, big, you know, big player in us, you know, going forward and growing. Yeah, definitely. And you've got your, uh, your website background there so you can guide them directly to, how to's and all that sort of stuff online. Yes, you could just yes, sort of have yeah. like a like a little card there, almost just with a with a QR code, and say, "See that poster on the wall over there? Just go scan That's that it. QR yep, code, yep, and it'll yep. take you to the uh, to the uh, recipes." Top work, man. Top work. So yeah, no, it's it's, it's good fun game. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So, what would it mean to you to to win this this ABA award? Oh, it'd be crazy. It 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 just it'd be like. I think, like, like like you said, what we've done in a short amount of time, it's just it, it'd just be pretty overwhelming, to be honest. But I, it'd mean it'd mean a lot. It'd just go look, you know, for the foundations we've laid over the last years and and what how what we've done in a short amount of time, like this is yeah, it'd mean it'd mean the world. No doubt about that at all, man. Well, listen, we're going to take a short break. Uh, for those that are joining us in the uh, Facebook community for this live recording, now's the time to start banging those questions into Kyle bec- uh, in, in the comments for Kyle because after the break, we're going to be uh, jumping into the uh, listener lesson part of the show. Alrighty, folks. Now, I did just mention before the Smoking Hawk Confessions barbecue community over on Facebook. So a big shout out to everyone who's joining us over there this morning for this live recording. And for those of you that are watching this a bit later on and you're not there yet, make sure you head on over there. It's the friendliest little corner of the internet. It's where we do all these live recordings. And it's a group of like-minded people. It's a family-friendly group, which is rare these days on the internet, let's be honest. And all we do is just hang out and talk about barbecue. It's an inclusive community. Everybody's welcome. We don't care where you're from we don't care even what you cook on you can cook on gas and you can still be part of the group okay we uh we love everybody we love barbecue and we'd love to have you there so head on over to facebook smoking hot confessions barbecue community and we'd love to have you 
you're listening to the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions podcast with massive barbecue nerd, Ben Arnott. All righty, Kyle, we're in the third part of the show now, and this is where we're going to, uh, well, you are going to share some knowledge with our viewers and our listeners. And those of the people that are joining us live online today, they're, they're going to start popping their questions in as well. And, uh, We'll put some of them to you as well. So I'm going to throw it over to you now. I've got my pen and paper here. I'm going to write some notes as you uh, share some wisdom with us. Yeah, sure. I think I, I think I just want to share like sort of when, you know, more of the basics of barbecue. So when you're starting out, like the things that you sort of want to look for and like the equipment you want. Um, I suppose for me, when a, when a, when a person when I'm introducing, like I've done a few like uh, workshops where I'm uh, demonstrated how to you know barbecue lessons or or demonstrations at various butcher shops. Um, and it's for people like, oh, you know, what, what, what do I need or how do I start getting into this? And I say the first thing is obviously barbecue, preferably like a, a charcoal. And it's all, I always recommend like a kettle, some sort of kettle, whether it's a Weber or, or, or another barbecue. Um, a, a chimney starter is a big one. Oh, huge. And, a, at, le- and at least an instant read probe uh, thermometer. Um, so you, you know, you, you got that, those mix of things. And then uh, the fourth one is find yourself a good butcher shop, um, and probably one that understands barbecue and how to, how to, how to cook. Um, so yeah, once you, you've got those, those four basic things, then you, you sort of set. And uh, after that, it's, you know, explore the uh, experiment, you know, get online, follow smoking hot confessions, follow rub and grub, you know, anyone that's sort of going to help you, uh, help you, uh, up your skills into uh, into cooking some great cube. So, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. So, why do you recommend the the kettle for a first time barbecuer? Uh, I think just because they're so versatile. Um, so either either a kettle or a, or, or a Weber go anywhere. Obviously, I'm going to push them. Um, uh, but they, they they are so versatile. You can, there's so many different cooking methods you can do on them. You can grill hot and fast. You know, you can do your low and slow, whether you've got a snake or you've, you're doing your minion setup or cooking indirect. You know, you start getting to accessories. It's your, your add-ons and takes it up to the next level. And yeah, and and they're easy. They're cheap for what they are. Um, GA. You know, what do they retail for? Like 130 bucks. It's crazy. Um, your kettle. You know, a few hundred bucks. Um, it's it's a really good really good cheap uh, cheap way to get into it. Yeah, and there's a bunch of uh, kettles always available on Gumtree and Facebook Marketplace oh, and whatnot it. as well. So you can really cut like get into this for cheap. Yeah, and you can get lost into it too. You start getting into the world of kettles. The next thing you know, you've you've got them stored in your roof. It's just yeah, <laughs> it's uh yeah, you people chasing their birth codes and color ones. It's it's yeah, it's it's not just about barbecue. It's 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 yeah. It's about, it's about that community. So There is a whole subculture just around the Weber kettle. So, yeah, like if you're looking is, for, a, for a barbecue to, uh, to really bring you together with people, it's, it's probably going to be the, the kettles and the GAs, particularly as we were talking about there before, the GAs really sort of gained popularity in the last couple of years. So what is the, the most interesting thing that you've cooked on a Weber kettle? Oh, most interesting thing on a Weber kettle? Um, I like, I've got, I've got a wok, so I like cooking, um, a bunch of stuff. That's, you know, you don't really think that you, you cooking stir fries on a Weber kettle. You're like, what? It's not the sort of thing you think, you know, grilling some sausages or slowing, slowing some brisket or whatever. So I've, I've, I've been, uh, what's so a wife being pregnant? She's got gestational diabetes as part of it. So oh, she's wow. really had to watch her glucose intake. Um, so I'm also trying to, you know, obviously accommodate that and eat a little healthier. So we've been having a lot of quick, hot and fast sort of dishes. So cooking in a wok and cooking sort of quick Asian meals is 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 quite quite nice. Um, so I've been doing a fair bit of that, and it's I wouldn't say it's the most interesting, but it's interesting from the point of view that it's not the normal thing that you would cook on a Weber, um, or that style anyway. So. So good, so good. And for people who are watching or listening to this and they are just getting into barbecue, you mentioned a charcoal chimney. Tell us a little bit about what that is and why it's important. Charcoal chimney, yeah. So it, it, it saves about 45 minutes of your life, that's for sure. Um, so rather than chucking a uh, fire lighter next to some coals and hoping that they light, um, a charcoal chimney uh, gives you that ability to, to light a bunch of coals a lot quicker, you know, 10, 15 minutes. 
uh, sort of like a, if, if you don't know, you've done full base. It's sort of like a cylinder with a handle on it um, with a little bit of base, chuck some charcoal in it, put a fire lighter or a bit of paper towel, some oil underneath it. That'll ignite it, get the whole thing lit, and then you dump it into your barbecue. Um, and then, yeah, wait for that. Wait for that to, to heat up and char up and away you go. Uh, but, you know, you can cook over a chimney too. <laughs> you know, you can sear a steak over a chimney. I've done that before. Don't, don't worry. Yeah, I've seen uh, folks doing that at uh, SCA competitions, but I've also seen melted grill grates from doing that as well, which was, uh, <laughs> yes, which was a yes, bit of a worry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, warped, warped, warped grill grates, definitely. Yeah, yeah. The, the charcoal chimney is actually what really turned it around for me. I was about ready to give up on on charcoal cooking back in the day, and then I happened to walk into a barbecue store and saw a charcoal chimney and just bought one and went, "Well, this is it. This is the last thing I'm doing. And if this doesn't work, I'm getting rid of this Weber kettle and I'll just go back to my gasser." And fortunately, <laughs> twelve there years later, go. here we are. <laughs> And the, the last thing on your list there was an instant read thermometer. Tell us a bit about what that is and why that's important. Yeah, so instant read. So the thing with, the thing with cooking these days is, you know, you learn, especially with look cooking long slow barbecue, it's not about, it's not about um, uh, the time it takes. Well, it kind of is, but it's not, you, you know, you're not going to go, all right, I'm following a recipe, cooking some beef ribs, smoke them for two hours, you know, wrap them after that, they'll be ready in another two hours. It's not about that. It's about, it's about, using temperature as a guide as well as t- like touch and you know feel of, of the meat so the temperature is just another tool that aids you in getting to that point where you know that the food's ready um which you know it time time factors into that obviously and you, the more you cook the more you, you the more experience and the more knowledge you're going to have and the more of just that gut feel um but the instant read probes yeah they they work a treat you know, was, yeah chuck it in anything like even these days i'll cook some grill some chicken wings and just to be sure, I, you know, I want to hit that, you know, 160, 165 Fahrenheit to make sure they're ready while well, I've got, you know, 20 guests around. Well, maybe not 20 these days, maybe for like capped at 10, right? So 10 guests around, I want to make sure that, you know, they're not going to be uh, walking home with a sore gut because I've uh, had too many beers that day. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, instant read thermometer and then, yeah, going into your probe thermometers. So they're definitely, definitely something to have in the, uh, the barbecue kit. Definitely, man. Some good advice there for sure. All right, I'm going to throw the studio over to you now. It's time to uh, give some thanks, give some praise, give some shout-outs to people who've helped you out along the way. Yeah, well, uh, thanks. First up, I'll thank the wife for putting up with everything. Like, she plays a big part in Rub and Grub. Um, she, yeah, she, without without her by my side, it, 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 it'd be a lot very uh, slower process and we wouldn't be where we are today. So massive thanks to her. Um Thanks to the like SA Barbecue community, um, South Wales Barbecue page. You guys rock! Like we've the things that we see and uh, have come out of that. Like businesses being formed, you know, based off people just gaining interest in barbecue. It's crazy. Um, the Weber GA Life community, um, Kane and Adriano for like you know for what we've done in the short amount of time with meat and eats. Um, and just yeah, oh, thank you, Ben, for putting me on today and all your expertise. You know, getting all those corners of the world and you interviewing people and it's bringing all that knowledge to us. It's yeah, it's been great. So you're welcome, mate. You've been a great guest to have. Well, look, I think that's about all the time that we have for today. So we're going to wrap it up now. So thank you very much and best of luck in the future with everything and of course with the ABA awards. Cheers, mate. Thank you. <laughs> And there you have it, family. That was Kyle from Rub and Grub and Meet Your Needs. Competition team, uh, trophy winning competition team, I should have said at the top of the show. I do apologize. Um, Rub and Grub, uh, rubs and barbecue accessories. If you haven't checked out the Weber GA riser, do check it out. It looks like a really cool bit of gear. I got some ideas for some things that I want to do with one as well. So I'm going to hit him up after this and uh, put it in order myself. So grab yourself one there as well and we'll learn how to use it together uh he mentioned the meet the meet your needs butcher shop so if you're in south australia and you're looking for low and slow cuts do check them out as you heard owned and run by competition barbecuers so you know you're going to get great low and slow cuts there do check them out he also mentioned the south aussie barbecue group on facebook and the weber go anywhere life weber ga life group as well so do head on over check them out They are both great groups. I'm in both of them. You don't have to be from South Australia to be in them. Obviously, I'm in it. I'm from Queensland. 
And uh, it's they're really great groups as well. They're similar to our own group here where, you know, a lot of the riffraff is, uh, is not tolerated and it's just a real great community, real supportive place to, to hang out and spend your time. Now, before I let you go, let's do the thing. Let's do the likes. Let's do the shares. Let's do the comments wherever you're watching this. Particularly on YouTube, make sure you subscribe so you get a notification every time we upload a new video because we are uploading our cooking videos now exclusively on YouTube. So if you want to do us, if you want to see us doing recipes and whatnot from our outdoor studio over here, make sure you look us up on YouTube, Smoking Hot Confessions, and subscribe to us over there. Now that is about it for today. Oh, one last thing. Spotify now has a rating system. So if you are listening to us on Spotify, just take 30 seconds, give us a five-star rating because that would really help us out on that platform as well. That's brand new for 2022 is uh, ratings over on Spotify. Now that really is all the time that we do have for today. So until next time, take care of each other and keep on queuing. Thanks for listening to the Smoking Hot Confessions podcast. Head on over to smokinghotconfessions.com for recipes, tips, and Ben's own confessions. <laughs>